watching today's video, I have brought the medium format Hasselblad X2D on a macro adventure in my favorite part of the woodland. Right at the top, I will say this is not a review of the Hasselblad X2D, that is not what I do here. I'm actually just testing this camera for CNET where I will be reviewing it. But as part of that test, I wanted to actually take it out and put it to use as a professional photographer. And today, that's all about macro. So I've got Hasselblad's 120 mm macro lens on the front. And I think on a medium format sensor that makes it somewhere around 90 mm This camera's got 100 megapixels of resolution, which is great for macro because it means you can crop in a lot more and still have plenty of detail. So I've brought it to a local part of my woodland where I've been to many times. I love exploring these little footpaths around here. Although now we're sort of moving towards the end of autumn, beginning of winter, so lots of things have died there's lots of decayed leaves. A lot of the mushrooms that I was seeing at one point have all pretty much started to go. So there's not quite as much to photograph, but I always enjoy just wandering around and exploring. It's a very calming experience. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I found a tiny little mushroom growing just one of the very few left towards the end of autumn. Um, and I think it could just be um, a nice, easy shot to get. As you can see, I've got the camera upside down on the tripod. That's letting me get the camera as close to the ground as possible. So inverting your center column like this is a great way of getting your camera um, very, very low down. Quite early morning, so it is pretty dim, um, especially under some of the tree canopies around here. So I have brought a small handheld LED light panel just to add a little extra light to this mushroom. I'm going to try and figure out where I want to put it though. I'm thinking slightly up off to one side like this looks quite nice. A little bit closer in. Yes, let's switch to manual focus. Focus into the closest point and now I'm just moving the camera back until that mushroom. There we go pops into sharp focus. Took my first shot at f3.5 because I want to have a nice shallow depth of field. I don't want all of this busy, grassy, leafy background in focus. But it's a little bit too narrow to get the mushroom in focus. So I'm going to up it a little bit to f5.6. A sixth of a second for my shutter speed. love this spot when we've got these fungus and this green moss. So we've got this amazing uh, balance of colour between the purple of the, uh, of the fungus with the very vibrant green of the mosses on this log. So I've framed up a scene here. I'm just going to use for natural light because the camera is on a tripod so I can use slower shutter speeds, it's not a problem. I'm probably going to focus stack this. So I am first of all going to put my aperture much higher. I'm going to go to f11, but I'm going to take multiple shots moving that focus throughout the scene and I can blend it together to make sure that every little bit is in focus. First of all, I'm just going to turn on the two second timer. That way that there's no handshake from when I'm pressing the button. It just gives it a couple of seconds to stabilize itself. Self timer, time, two seconds. And I'm just gonna start off with a shot of my hand in the frame. That way I know when I look back in Lightroom, I can see exactly when this stack begins. So we're gonna start right at the bottom on those mosses down there. Moving the focus a little bit further up this time. And move it further up again. And I'm going to repeat that process until I've taken that focus all the way through the scene. I think for this, because I'm looking basically straight at it, it's probably only going to be about five or six images. I'm going to play with my angles a little bit here because I really like this subject. I love that color contrast with the purple and the green. And it may be that there are some better ways to represent that. And although this is a 120 mil macro lens, I actually can't get that close up. This is basically my closest focusing point. I am used to getting a little bit closer using my Canon lens. So this probably isn't a, a setup that I'd want to go for if I was really into doing extreme macro. 
and for a much more side-on view here. I really like it because I think we're going to get some much better depth of field. I think this works best in a portrait orientation. I've turned the uh, rule of thirds grid on and you can just see how I've lined up this line of moss coming in here and going up here. And then we've got the three blobs of this fungus just going diagonally across the frame. Focusing manually on this middle section here, F16, 0.5 seconds. I do like that shot because having that out of focus foreground and the background does give much more of a sense of depth. I think if I'd focus stacked all of this, it would really lose some of its impact. So I'm just gonna leave it with the one shot. These old logs are great for finding things at this time of year. On the one side we had the mosses, this side is another little mushroom and it's just clinging to the side of this log. And I think it's just gonna make a really nice composition. So I've got my camera quite uh, in line with the log. So we're gonna have a lot of out of focus, shallow depth of field for this image. So I'm just zooming in and making sure that I'm focused right on the tip of that mushroom for my first shot. I am gonna focus stack this. And I'm at F, F3.5. I'm not focus stacking this so that I get every single thing nice and sharp. I really want that shallow depth of field. And so I'm only going to actually take focus stack points on the mushroom itself. As at F3.5, if I take a shot of the very edge of that mushroom's cap, the main body of it and the stem won't be in focus. So I'm gonna just zoom in now, adjust my focus slightly further up, take another shot, and then I'm gonna zoom back in focus this time on the mushroom stalk and take another shot. Very simple scene here. I saw that we had this little sort of slightly half eaten mushroom hiding in all this um, undergrowth. So I've just pointed the camera down. We've got lovely light coming in from the sunrise over here which I think is just really picking it out amongst all that foliage. It is a very messy scene and that is what I quite like about it. Um, and I can tell already that there's gonna be some uh, Lightroom work to really emphasize the mushroom in amongst all of this mess. So I've manually focused on the mushroom, F3.5 for that shallow depth of field, 30th of a second. In fact, I think I'm actually gonna go slightly faster, 45. Simple top-down scene, f3.5, 90th of a second, autofocus. I love old crispy leaves, they're always full of curving forms and textures. Probably one of my favorite autumnal things to shoot. Most of these are pretty much uh, decayed now, very, very dark browns and blacks. There are a few that still stand out. And certainly as I look towards some of these verges, we've still got ivies and nettles that are very vivid green. So there is still plenty of things to shoot around here. Just a case of spending those extra few minutes slowing down and looking at what's around. And hopefully something will actually stand out. Something will catch my eye. Maybe it's just this leaf that's catching that sun ray coming through. Love all the shadows in this scene. Not a particularly standout composition, but just I think a, a nice scene from the day. And just because a shot isn't gonna end up maybe on your portfolio or isn't a shot you would submit to an award, doesn't mean that it isn't a shot that you shouldn't take. I've got the camera down low here because on this log we've got these lovely dark green ivy leaves but also um, some lichen coming out of one of the um, bits of wood. So I've framed up a vertical composition that uh, places those I think in a really nice way. F11, 0.3 seconds. And actually while I've been taking that shot, 
just found some more lichen poking out of the ground, um, which I think looks really nice against this decayed leaf that it's sort of growing against. It's right on the ground, so I'm not gonna be able to use my tripod. I'm gonna see if I can put the camera on the ground and I have to just move some of these leaves slightly out of the way. Again, I'm manually focusing. I'm gonna bring my aperture back. F5.6, tenth of a second. And at this point, my video camera decided it didn't want to continue working with me, but I did snag this shot on my way out. It's a top-down shot, and I've used five focus stack points to blend together. I love the contrast between the colors and textures of that burnt log in the middle against the foliage surrounding it. I also found these mushrooms on an old log, and again, I did a basic focus stack on each of the caps and stems. I did the same thing here, combining just two focus stack points to get the mushroom sharp enough while still maintaining that shallow depth of field. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these shots have come out from this camera. There's no question that it can take absolutely stunning shots. I think really it's the sort of camera that I'd want to use more for landscapes, for travel photography. There's definitely a few things that I'd want to change if I wanted to use it as my main macro camera. It's not very quick, the autofocus isn't super reliable, and I'd need a much more close-up macro lens than I'm able to get with this. Also, I found a flip-out screen to be absolutely crucial for composing those low angle shots. And those are all the reasons why I just spent my money on a Canon R5, but it's been really, really good fun shooting with a camera like this. Well, I think that brings me to an end of today's video. Um, I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, do please make sure to hit that like button and of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.